This, if you like, is an open letter to people who proclaim themselves to be anti-feminists. Ooh, what have we here? Looks like we got ourselves a right proper bedroom feminist, haven't we? You may call me Tog, and I identify as an anti-feminist, and I am delighted to have a dialogue with you. Now, I'm just gonna lay it out there straight away and be totally upfront about this. Feminism means equality for everybody. I am afraid you are mistaken. Feminism fights for the political, economic, personal, and social rights for women, not for everybody. That is what feminism is, equality. And if anybody is in doubt about that, let me just lay it out there from the word go. If you're thinking that you're watching this video and you are anti-feminist, then you are anti-equality. Well, 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 would you like to be just a little bit more smug with that assertion? I think it's safe to say that it's been a roller coaster for humankind, let's be honest. I have a roller coaster. Would you like to come to ride mine? And that is all there is to it. So this weekend has been a roller coaster of a time for feminism, for women, and you know what? I'm for men as well, which I will come on to. Well, not everyone can ride my roller coaster, kitty cat. I have standards. So yesterday in America and in other parts of the world, including here in the UK, there were women's marches where we saw women and men and children, families out with signs protesting against the injustices that women have been served across the world. It seemed like mostly an anti-Trump and pro-choice rally. Now really, this is just common sense. This is just human beings asking for equality. Now off the back of the amazing scenes that we saw yesterday, I sat down this morning and I watched a show called The Big Questions, which is a debate show about various topics. And the first topic was about feminism. Ooh, did the debate get nice and intersectional. And there were people in the audience speaking out on the show, women, and men who were proclaiming themselves to be anti-feminist. How scandalous. And thank goodness there were also people in the audience who were very intelligently and eloquently counteracting the arguments that these anti-feminists were putting forward with just, you know, good old common sense. Just things that are obvious to every right-thinking person. And by the way, I mean, when I say right-thinking, this is my, like, law side coming out, but what I mean by that is people who are logical and understand the world, not right-wing. <laughs> She's revolted just saying right-wing. This is like gonna get confusing. So various arguments came out of this anti-feminist discussion that we had on this show. Look at the disgust on her face. She's totally revolted just on the idea of giving the anti-feminist a platform. And I'm just going to address a few of them. This should be interesting. Let's just see what we think about these. So one of the good old arguments that was trotted out there, as per usual, is the anti-feminist saying, but you're talking about equality for women, but when it comes to jobs, surely it should be the best person for the job who gets the job. Well, yeah. If you run a business, hiring the wrong person could end up costing you a lot of money. So let's just delve into this a little bit deeper. What makes someone qualified for a particular job? Past experiences, education, drive, work ethic, and just overall skills. It's the way that they have lived their life thus far to come to this point of being good at this job. Now let's take a job. For example, a job in technology, say a coder. Now we can see that the person who would get this job would be someone who has probably had an interest in this kind of thing, like when they were younger, been encouraged to pursue a educational path which would lead them to being able to be a good candidate for this job. I still fail to see anything wrong with any of this. Now, still in 2017, we are seeing that even as children, boys and girls are being separated out with the, the toys that they're given, the toys that are marketed towards them, I don't believe you know how marketing works. Oh boy, look, darling. More little girls like princesses, and more little boys like trucks. 
The market for these target demographics is determined by market research. Please, do us all a favor, sugar baby, and learn some basic economics. To want to do a particular thing or follow a particular path. Now, this is not necessarily true across the board, but I think we can take a general, you know, consensus of what's happening by the fact that in jobs such as technology, the women who are in sort of the higher roles within companies, well, there aren't any. <laughs> well, looky here. It looks like it only took me maybe a two-minute Google search to prove you wrong. Looks like there is some women who are CEOs in tech industries. At least there's a few. I've got a list of the top 11 right here. So, if women are truly driven, they do it. They can get into it. Just gotta have the drive. At least aren't many. That's better. I think it's safe to say. CEOs of the big companies are usually men, and they're usually white men. Check your privilege, you cis white male. Now we have all seen those images of the girls magazine next to the boys magazine, or the girls toy next to the boys toy, and I know that these are just examples, but when we're seeing the result of what we're seeing, I don't know how you can argue too much against this as a general thing. So we're seeing the front image of a girls magazine with the little headings on the magazine saying how to talk to your crush, how to wake up looking super pretty. And then we see the boys magazine, how to build a bloody rocket ship, how to achieve your goal, how to follow your dream into being what you want to be. This is what we're seeing, the contrast. The Amazing Atheist already covered this whole magazine debacle. And I will link his video down below. But to sum it up, girls' life isn't nearly as vapid as it appears, and boys' life isn't nearly as lofty. And as I said before, this chicky baby really needs to learn about marketing. And don't forget, it's very easy to be like, well, things are changing now. We're seeing more encouragement of, you know, of girls to play with boy toys, whatever, oh my god, whatever that, you know, that means. And, you know, we're seeing things changing, yes, but what we're talking about, so if there are people saying, well, say, women in their 30s aren't getting these jobs that are, you know, in tech industries or whatever. Have you ever considered that maybe not too many ladies are that interested in tech jobs? Well, yeah, because when they were kids 30 years ago, these things were firmly in place. Things might be changing, and please, like, baby Jesus, I hope they carry on changing forever. There truly is no end goal, is there? But uh, th we need to see it more happening, and this is why this situation is what we have. Well, you heard it, ladies. Feminism needs you to be interested in things you're just not into. So you have these anti-feminists saying the person who should get the job is the person who's best for the job, but the person who's been conditioned for the job is the man. I'm not even sure what you're trying to say. Should men not follow their dreams just because there's too many men already in the industry? Hopefully we can start to see this changing more and more. But that's the only way it's going to change, if we change how we raise children to be. Please, make sure to brainwash your children, ladies and gentlemen. Another argument that came out of this discussion was, but what if a man wants to be a house husband? There's still a stigma around that, that's not equal. How do you not see that that is what feminism is about? Equality. I've read a few feminist articles so far, and they make it very clear that feminism is not about men. So equality for everyone, except for men. If you're saying, well, a man should be have the right to be a house husband, of course he should. Do you know how you achieve that? By empowering the women to be the ones who go out there and get the just as higher paid job. Look, honey buns, ladies can make it if they like. It takes time, dedication, one must be willing to put their life on hold in order to climb the corporate ladders. Not many ladies are interested in such things. To be able to have that family situation. Feminism benefits everybody. And you know, that is just using a heterosexual couple as an example, as per the debate I was watching and that argument that came up. A lot of people that I know from the LGBTQ community support feminism because they understand the vital importance of equality. Um, I, I say most people, actually 
exclusively everybody that I know from the community. I mean, that's probably not a, a rule across the board, but in my own experience, that's true. Oh, look, she's getting all nice and intersectional now. But in all seriousness, from what I've seen, people in the LGBTQ plus that have different views aren't treated too kindly. You only need to look at some of the signs from the Women's March of these wonderful 80-year-old women holding up these signs saying, my arms hurt from holding up the sign for the last 60 years. The elderly aren't very well known for keeping up with the times. And then, not only are we all battling against particular leaders in the world who have just set the clock back. Now I wonder who she could be talking about. Hmm... Not only are we, are we fighting against those people, we're just fighting against, like, the regular people on the street who still believe that feminism is an evil thing. I wouldn't say evil, just misinformed. Another argument that came out of this discussion was, well, we're now making women into more victim and small, delicate creatures than ever by having systems on night out where they could go to the bar and order a particular drink if they're feeling uncomfortable or, or scared because they think their date is a weirdo. I have no issues with it, but I wonder if gentlemen could be offered the same courtesy because some bitches be crazy. How is that a bad thing? Teaching women that they can be safe on their nights out meeting people for the first time. How, how is that a bad thing? And they're saying, well, when I was young, we didn't have any of this. We just had to make our mistakes and get on with it. Well, maybe that's why in recent years, we've seen women come forward who say that they were raped or sexually assaulted 30 years ago, who felt like they couldn't speak out then and they're speaking out now. And in your country, men can't be raped by women. Do you really think that these things didn't happen years ago? Or do you think that maybe women were so oppressed and not able to speak about things that they just didn't? And they were just raped and then let it go? I think you are generalizing a very delicate issue. Or held it with them for 30 years. What do you really believe? It's just obvious, isn't it? And then just really, the icing on the cake, the whole situation on this, on this program was... <laughs> There was a, um, a man from the church there and he was, you know, he was a feminist and he, w he was saying, you know, when women bishops were allowed to be in the UK, which happened um, in recent years, that was wonderful and that was a, a brilliant step forward. And there was a lady in the audience who proclaimed herself as an anti-feminist. When she was asked if she was a feminist, she said, absolutely not. My, my heart sank, but I kept watching. And... Uh, she said, oh my god, I actually can't even say, she, she, on this point about women bishops, she said, I actually don't think women bishops are great. Shall I go get some kindling for the witch burning? And the presenter said, why? And she said, I think we need more men in the church. And I honestly almost cried. Like, I don't know whether it was like sadness or, or like just pure amusement. <laughs> I don't know. My guess without watching the program is that she could have been trolling. I'm not a religious person, but let me tell you, one thing the church does not need is more men. Doesn't need any more men. The church has been run by men for hundreds and thousands of years. In fact, don't even get me started because believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Not very religious, but knows everything about it. She is an authority. Do not question her. When it comes to this, I've studied it at length. And in the end, she didn't actually have an answer. She just stopped talking and sort of sat back. She didn't have an answer to the question of why she doesn't think women bishops are good other than the church needs male leadership. No reason why. Just, just, that's what she thought. And how is believing in the superiority of male leadership any worse than believing in the superiority of female leadership? And you know what, there's probably some people watching this video who are going to comment below saying Well, you're sat there with your bleach blonde hair in your pink wall painted room talking about feminism I would have worn turquoise instead of black if I were you. It goes better with your hair and skin tone. Plus, it would contrast against the pink nicely Well, yeah, because I chose these things I, I, I guarantee someone will have not watched the video to the end and will be sat there thinking well, your room's painted like you think you're a Barbie doll. 
No, like, I chose, I chose this pink wall because I like it, and I, I highlight my hair because I like, I like it, because I choose to like it. So you can be nice and feminine, but it's not a product of brainwashing. Other ladies have no agency. And that is literally the whole point. So yeah, I just had to get this off my chest, guys. Um, I think it's the right moment to talk about it all. I want to use my platform for useful things. Um, and here's one of them. So dear anti-feminists, just have a word with yourselves. That's all I gotta say. All right, I think I addressed her points and managed to make it through all of her waffling. I wish all of you a pleasant rest of your day.